everybody, it's your favorite Auntie Mo. We are back for another episode review of The Real Black China. This is season one, episode six in a New York Minute. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down and hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, let me let y'all know right now, this episode got on my dog on nerves. It was a lot of arguing back and forth, a lot of a lot of chirp, just a lot of back and forth about nothing, a lot of long drawn out arguments, a lot of yelling. I ain't, it was getting on my doggone nerves, y'all. This review ain't gonna be long because it was a whole lot of arguing and it was just getting on my nerves. I was trying to pay attention as much as I could. I didn't even want to go back and watch watch it again just to make sure I didn't miss anything because I know I didn't miss anything. It was just a bunch of yelling. I hope y'all are ready for the review. I'm ready to give it to you. Let's get right on up into it. Y'all, so this episode picked up where the last one left off. They're in the hotel. She's getting ready to go on the Wendy Williams show. She's yelling at everybody about her hair and her makeup and her outfit not being right. Um, Freshie, Jamal, and Treasure, they all trying to calm her down. She's snapping on everybody, calling everybody idiots and morons. Everybody's trying to make suggestions about what they need to do to make it right. Anything that everybody's saying, she's shooting it down left and right. She's just arguing, going off on everybody. Treasure's trying to make suggestions to her about what she needs to do about her clothes. I mean, she's just snapping on everybody. It was getting on my doggone nerves. To the point, like I said, I had to turn it down and just stare at the TV for a minute to see if anything was going to pick back up because it was just a bunch of yelling back and forth. I was like, oh my God. Freshie and Jamal, they trying to get China to understand, look, we need to go. We need to be there by 1130 so we can be ready to walk on the set by 12 o'clock so we can be ready to film. This is what it was. They told China that they needed to be there an hour earlier than the time she was expected to actually be there. She was pissed off because, um, what was it? Ashton came and woke her up at 6.15 in the morning when she specifically told him to come and wake her up at 6.30. 15 minute difference. I don't see the big difference, but then again, when you're tired, hey, that 15 minutes make a big old doggone difference. Then she says when she gets up, her food wasn't there right then and there for her to eat. Ashton said that the food was downstairs. She was pissed off about that. She was pissed off about her hair and her makeup not going. It was just a lot, y'all. It was just a lot. It was just getting on my doggone nerves. Then her and Freshie start going back and forth because Freshie thinks that she said that she made him, which that's not what she said. She said she made this, meaning the Black China brand. So they start going back and forth. Frenchie gets pissed off. Frenchie ends up storming out and leaving. He's like, I got time for this doggone crap. I can deal with Mo from somebody else paying me more money than this. Like, he gets pissed. I don't blame him. Like I said, it was, ooh, it was just a bunch. It was just a bunch of, uh, 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 it was getting on my doggone nerves. Ooh, it was getting on my damn nerves. After though. he gets pissed off and he leaves, Jamal ends up having to go downstairs and talk to him because he was finna quit right then and there. He was sick of it. So Jamal goes downstairs and talks to him, ends up talking him back into, you know, coming there and helping China out. Since Freshie is the one that set up this interview in the first place, they damn sure don't want to lose Freshie because he the connect. So Jamal ends up talking him, you know, he comes back upstairs. Freshie ends up apologizing to Black China for getting pissed off and leaving, which... I mean, she the talent. They got to please the talent. It is what it is. He apologizes to her for leaving. And, you know, he tells her, like, look, I just want you to understand that this is a big deal for you. This is your first time doing an interview on national TV like this with a person that has taught cash money about you. So we need to make sure if for nothing else that we are there on time because he doesn't want this headline about, you know, Black China getting into it with Wendy, yada, yada, yada. And not only that, his reputation is on the line. He the one set this up. He ain't finna have you messing up the church's money because you worried about what your hair and your makeup gonna look like. Girl, no, no, boo, boo. I get that. I get she's stressed out because, you know, this is a big deal for her. But at the same time, girl, these people here to help you. She going off on everybody i mean every damn body so y'all this argument goes on for forever and ever and ever and ever and ever 
Um, Jamal finally makes a suggestion like, you know, how about you, you know, you wear your classic black china with the bangs and the long hair. She starts snapping at Jamal, calling him, are, are you an idiot? Are you delusional? Are you a moron? That's my throw on wig. Like, girl, girl, she starts snapping on Jamal. But Jamal is like, okay, you snapping about your hair. I'm trying to give you suggestions on what to do with your hair. She starts going off on him, y'all. Everybody focus was different. Like, Treasure then comes in because after that, like, um, Jamal, Ashton, and Freshie, they're all sitting down in the living room. They're all talking with each other. Basically, like, look, I, basically, they all sort of venting to each other. Meanwhile, China is in her bedroom screaming, yelling, cussing, going off. Treasure is in there with her. I guess it's Treasure. She's screaming, cussing out, going off at. Treasure ends up coming back in the living room, going off on them. And it's like, y'all sitting here, y'all not doing nothing. When really they like, okay, well, what the hell else is it that we supposed to do? Like, I get a Treasure as her best friend. She's trying to ride for her and do everything that she can to at least make China happy so she ain't stressing out any more than what she already is. But the fact of the matter is, that, that girl was going to be stressed out regardless of what the hell was going on. She was just going off for no doggone reason. Freshie wanted her to be there on time. Freshie and Jamal, their focus was to get her ass there on time. Treasure was to make her ass happy. Ashton was to get her what she need so she stopped cussing. The makeup dude, he just trying to do his damn job. She keep crying, messing up his masterpieces and stuff. She He, he keep kind of... You gotta go back in there, touch up this, touch up that. Y'all, it was a hot damn mess. Finally, Treasure gets her downstairs. She throws on her throw on wig, the one that she got pissed off at Jamal at in the first damn place. She puts the wig on, wig looks bomb. She puts a little outfit on, outfit is banging. She goes downstairs, then she starts yelling and cursing at everybody because her car ain't there. Finally, she gets in the car. She's in the car with Treasure. She's cursing about the makeup and the hair not being right. She starts cursing about Ashton not doing his job. She calls Ashton to make sure Ashton has her backup shoes. Lo and behold, the boy don't got the girl backup shoes. It wasn't like you wasn't in enough shit as it was, boy. So then he got to go all the way back to the damn hotel to get the damn shoes for her outfit. Y'all, it gave me a damn headache. Oh my, oh God. Y'all, so finally she gets on stage with Wendy. She does the interview and she does amazing. She knocks the interview out the park. She does an amazing, an amazing job. You would have never known nothing happened behind the scenes whatsoever had you not watched this episode of this show. You would have never have known. She got out there and she did amazing. She knocked it out the park, y'all. So afterwards, she's in the car with um, um, Jamal and Treasure. They both giving her praise, telling her she did amazing. You knocked it out. You did great. You look great. You pulled it all together. China's hoping that people will give her, you know, will look at her differently after this interview. She's hoping that people will give her a chance. Baby, let me tell you, not after they watch this show, not after they watch this episode, because the way you did your staff was wrong. And then on top of that, not once did she apologize for the way she went off on everybody. My bad, y'all. I was stressed out. Y'all know what it is. She didn't thank them for pulling me together, for having me look amazing. Thank you for taking my verbal abuse for me, calling everybody here idiots and morons and dummies and everybody get the hell up out of my face and everybody stupid. She didn't apologize for nothing. She was happy with the interview. She was happy with the, the way everything went. And she's hoping that people will look at her in a different light after this. I'm just sitting there looking like, girl, what? Y'all, so later on that night, she's back at the hotel or whatever, and she's meeting with the team. She's meeting with Ashton, Jamal, and Freshie about everything that led up to the Wendy interview. She wants to talk about the whole preparation, everything that happened from start to finish, and how everything could have been done differently. Now, she tells them that, you know, 
first of all, I'm pissed off because y'all woke me up at 6.15 instead of 6.30. Ashton tells her, okay, I apologize. It was 15 minutes earlier. You still didn't get up to 6.30. Okay, next. Then she says she's pissed off because her food wasn't there. Ashton tells her the food was three minutes away. It was right downstairs. All you had to do was go to the bathroom and pee or something. By the time you got out the bathroom, the food would have been there. Then she's pissed off because she says makeup wasn't there. Makeup was there. Makeup was like, no, no, no. I was there. I was, boo-boo, we was waiting on you. You said you had to eat first. Then she's pissed off about hair because she said hair didn't do her hair right. It's like, Jamal is trying to tell her, basically at the end of the day, look, we, I understand you're pissed off because this didn't happen, this didn't happen, this didn't happen. But check this out. At the end of the day, everybody needs to take responsibility about what they've done to contribute to how the day went. And that's just what it is. Basically, he's trying to let her know, look here. The only reason why we told you an hour earlier than the time you actually had to be there is because your ass ain't never on time. You always late. You want extra, extra CP time. You beyond CP time. You want straight Negro time. And we ain't got time for that. But she didn't understand that. Regardless of what anybody would have said, I think she just wanted everybody to take responsibility for you know, whether it was her fault or not. She wanted everybody else to take responsibility on how the day went. When Jamal is like, okay, I get it. I'll take responsibility for my part. But look here, the talent needs to take responsibility in their part too. Y'all, so once again, it was this long drawn out argument about nothing and it got on my nerves. It went on for probably another child, another 15, 20 so minutes. She gets pissed off. She walks out of there. She's like, you know, I'm finna go out. I'm finna go have some drinks. Then she says she's on her way to Atlanta because she has a hosting event that she's got coming up. And y'all, that was the end of the episode right there. I don't know if y'all keep up with her in the blogs, but you know her and her best friend, Treasure, have fallen out. Her and Freshie have fallen out. Her and Jamal have fallen out. I don't know what kind of light she's trying to get with this show, but Sister, girl, baby, boo-boo, let me let you know. This ain't a good look for you. But then again, I don't know if this is a look that she's going for because she's ruining some relationships. Her and her best friend, Treasure, y'all, y'all, Treasure is, I mean, she ain't going through it no more, but it was a point in time that she was all on, you know, on Instagram venting about the, the next couple of episodes that's going to come up, we're trying to call her a bum ass bitch. I mean, it's just a bunch of crap going on. Again, I don't know what kind of look China going for. If this is the look she going for, you know, go on, girl, because you doing it, whatever look you going for. But this right here, it ain't right, girl. It ain't right. The first episode, I actually had hope for you, Angela Renee. Now I'm looking at China, Black China, And girl... I don't know about y'all, but uh, I hope y'all like this review. Like I said, this episode was a little bit boring for me. It was just a bunch of arguing, and it got on my nerves. But hopefully y'all enjoyed the review. If y'all watched the episode, let me know what y'all thought about it. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Oh, one more thing before I go. The shirt I have on, Positive Vibes. It is by um, Andrea's Clothing. I will put her info down in my description box. It is by a young up-and-coming entre entrepreneur by the name of, I think it's... <laughs> Briante Greg. If Auntie is saying your name wrong, boo boo, let me know. Go check her out. I will put her info up in my description box. Auntie loves y'all. I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ah, hello.